Hey guys, welcome. This is my first YouTube video. Well, really it's my second video. The first one I have filmed and edited. I need to do the voiceover and get it uploaded. But I haven't and that's what motivated me to do this video first because this video is one on how to plan things, how to set goals, how to make things happen and I need that. I'm actually, I chose my background, my craft room, which is a mess because it kind of folds into the whole why I need to do this video first. I really need to set some goals and make a plan so that I can get things done and move forward. I want to start with a shout out to Think Media. I was watching one of their videos and the guy says, you have to start messy. And as a perfectionist, that's just against everything I believe. But the reality is, we're not gonna go in and make a perfect video. Well, first off, probably ever, but especially in your first video. He said, in fact, you'll probably cringe at your first video, and you may even cringe your first 50 videos because they're just gonna be messy. So I thought, okay, I can start messy. So that's the plan here. So Think Media, thank you for the inspiration and the motivation to just get this done. Well, I was working on some shelves because I wanted to move my paint from a cabinet to shelves so that I can see it more easily. And I thought, really? That's your priority right now. Your room looks like this, and that's your priority. Okay, so I don't wanna bore you to death, but I do wanna give you a little background on who I am. And I am a major procrastinator. So my motto is never do today what you can put off until tomorrow. And that's the opposite of the real saying, which is never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. But I kind of reverse it because I am just, everything can be done tomorrow. So hopefully if I set down, make a plan, set some goals, and I'm gonna give you some step-by-steps on how to make those goals happen, how to accomplish those goals so that you can get things done. I mean, that's, I'm gonna have to do it for me so I thought, why don't I just share this information with you and hopefully it can help to get you to get some projects done as well. And the thing about goals is they're not mystical things. They're not things that can't be accomplished and we all know kind of what we have to do to make certain things happen, but it's actually developing that plan. They say if you plan or if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So planning where you are, where you want to be, and what you're planning to get there. Now you have to do things along the way, step by step, so that you can actually accomplish that goal and that plan. So when I was 19 years old, I was in retail sales, commissioned retail sales. You had to sell. And they would send you to sales meetings to learn how to get better at it, to learn how to actually help people to get what they want. And the more people you help get what they want, the better it is for you because then they help you to get where you want which really is a lot about YouTube okay the goal setting method I use goals have to be four things now I'm gonna use I want to lose weight and so I'll use that as kind of my example on on why they have to be what they have to be so number one they have to be specific because if I said I want to lose weight that's just an idea that's not a goal if I said I want to lose 55 pounds, that's a goal. So they have to be specific. Now the second thing, they have to be realistic. Because if I said I wanted to lose 55 pounds by next week, that's not realistic. I'm not going to be able to lose 55 pounds by next week. So I'm not going to work really hard to accomplish that goal. So you really need to be specific. You need to be realistic. And the third one, Goals need to be written. And when I say written, I don't mean typed out. I mean written. I truly believe there is something about writing words on paper that makes a connection to our soul. When we type, we just type. It's words in a box. But when you handwrite something, there's that connection between it's really me, it's really part of me because it's handwritten. So I think that's the third thing. So they have to be specific. They have to be realistic. They have to be written. And fourth, they have to be measurable. Okay, measurable. 
not miserable. You can't make them miserable because then you won't want to do them. But they have to be measurable. Because if I say I want to lose 55 pounds and I give myself a time frame I want to do it, then I write it down and it's right there for me to see. The reality is, did I accomplish that goal? Did I do what I set out to do? Sometimes we're going to have to say no to that. But sometimes we get to say yes to that. And if we say no, we just reevaluate and set another goal and work towards that. So that they have to be specific, realistic, written, and measurable. And I went to a class one time. It was a time management class. And they said, if you keep a to-do list and you keep a calendar, you're just a calendar keeper. To really be a time manager, you have to go back and evaluate your day and see what did I plan and what did I do? That's truly where the separation from people who succeed and people who don't is to say, did I do what I set to do and how can I get better? Now, really it starts back at those without a plan really don't have a lot, they're just kind of out flailing. But those with the plan, with goals, and then measure that and say, did I accomplish what I wanted to accomplish? You have to do that in a five year plan, a six month plan, a one week plan, a daily plan. Because if you look at everything daily, then you're evaluating before you get too far off track. If I want to lose 55 pounds in the next six months, then I have to break that down and how much do I need to do a month? How much do I need to do a week? And you know, there's gonna be realities to that, like I'll lose more at first than I will towards the end when I'm plateauing and things like that. So it's really important to know where you are, to know where you wanna be, develop a plan to get there, and set some goals to help you accomplish that. <laughs> As I said, I'm sure this is gonna be very choppy and very um, unorganized. So hopefully it makes sense. I tell you what, what you can do is let me know in the comments below if it makes sense or if you'd like to see another video down the road when I'm better at this. Because again, I think the information is, is really good and hopefully you can get that out of whatever mess I get to put out. This is just to show you how frustrating this whole process was, how far out of my comfort zone I am, how awkward I felt, lots of eye rolling, and just frustration in general. Stupid. If you'll stick with me through my learning curve, I promise I will get better. And if you'd please consider subscribing and giving this video a like, they say that's how you grow your channel. But now we're going to take a look at a couple of versions of my semi-organized but very messy craft room. Now these are my paper racks, which I do love, but it's still hard to find the paper I want when I want it. Now these are some custom shelves I made for my ribbon. I was supposed to paint them. Someday I will. We'll see how that goes. But I do love ribbon and I love the fact that I can just see all of it. Now that is a box of Dollar Tree pumpkins. Haven't used it in two years, but I needed a whole box of them. And this particular video was taken in the summer and it's messier than my room is in its current state, but I did make some progress. And so I'm gonna take that as a win. But you can see there's still just so much stuff. And again, it's organized, but it's just cluttered. And of course, the tabletops you can't even use, which is part of the problem. So it's a mess. Now this is the overflow, which really is the hallway. <laughs> and it's not supposed to be the overflow, but I have gotten that down quite a bit and we'll see that video in a minute. But this is Christmas and just Christmas, Christmas. Now this is the media room and this was my old setup for how I took pictures of things I was selling. Now this is the new video. And this is the current state of my room when I did the video. So it's a little bit better. I can at least get to some of the tabletops. Can't get to the ribbon anymore, but we'll get there. 
and then the overflow is a lot better than it used to be. So all the Christmas stuff is gone. Now we've moved on to Valentine's. These are some faux cupcakes I was making. And there are some of them that are done. And some mini ones. And then here's all the Easter. And see how the boxes are more organized and smaller now? That makes it a lot better. And then that was Valentine's and some more Valentine's. And then this is all of my packaging and some more floral, some fabric. It's just crazy, but it'll get better and I'm gonna set some goals. And then what I will do is show you once I've completed the process. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.